we are going to Ipoh to do the research about the culture of Ipoh and visiting those places that are historical relics. The 19th century tin mining bomb influenced much of the present day architecture in Ipoh. From classic British colonials and former bungalow, here are the culture trips of historical building and location in Ipoh. The Ipoh railway station was initially meant to be a hospital and used before the 20th century as such before being turned into a station. The original completion year of 1917 was delayed for three years due to lack of construction materials as well as high costs during World War I. Designed by Otto Benison Herbeck, it was first constructed and opened in 1935, making it the second concrete station to be constructed in the town. Ipo Railway Station serves as the main railway terminal for the state. It is owned by Kreatapi Tana Melayu Berhad and offers KTM intercity services as well as handling freight trains. As part of KTMB's Rawang Ipoh double tracking and electrification project, which completed in January 2008, the Ipoh station has undergone rehabilitation to not only incorporate modern elements while keeping its historical look, but also accommodate the double track. Sharing the same building as the historical Ipoh railway station, the majestic station hotel Ipoh is also known as the Taj Mahal of Ipoh. Located in the city centre, its Moorish and Victorian-inspired architecture provides a stunning spectacle ride in the midst of the busy city. The hotel provides 100 well-appointed guest rooms and its open-air balcony is the perfect place for guests to relax and unwind. In October 2007, the Ipoh station was reopened after seven years of renovation as part of the railway electrification and double tracking between Rawang and Ipoh. The Ipoh station is fronted by a large square known as the Ipoh Station Square. Between 2011 and 2013, the entire square was heavily stripped and rebuilt as an open plaza. The reconstructed square is rebranded as the Ipoh Heritage Square. The square is prominent for a cenotaph erected in the center. The cenotaph has subsequently been modified with new flags to honor fallen soldiers from Para in World War II, the Malayan Emergency, the Indonesian Confrontation and Reinsurgency Period. Banaraya Ipoh is the city council which administers the city of Ipoh in the state of Perak. This council was established after the city was officially granted city status on 27 May 1988. It is designed by Arthur Benison Huba, who also designed the Ipoh Railway Station. This building was completed in 1916. It is responsible for public health and sanitation, waste removal and management, town planning, 
environmental protection and building control, social and economic development, and general maintenance function of urban infrastructure. This town hall has been the venue of many significant events. It was here the Malay Nationalist Party, the first political party formed in Malaya, held its inaugural congress from November 30 to 3rd December 1945. It is attended by more than 300 people from all over Malaya. This building also served as a post office. It was once the district police headquarters in 1948. This building is still used today for wedding banquet, official function, and other events. It also has some restoration work done over the years. Currently, the boundary of the council covers an area of 643 square kilometers with a population of over 720,000 people. As the state capital of Para, Ipoh serves as the center of administration, commerce, sport, finance, politics, religion, and education. Now under the leadership of the mayor, the Ipoh City Council continues its effort to transform the city into a dynamic and distinguished city. Hi guys, the Spurge Memorial Clock Tower was built on 1909. Before I talk about memorial, let me introduce you all who is J.W.W. Bush. J.W.W. Bush is the first resident in Malaya State at Perak. He is responsible in quality tests and control administration in Perak. He died on 2nd November 1875 because of assassination by a few Malay ministers. This assassination because of they not satisfy with Bush rule and system in Perak. This memorial built by his son and nurse on the 31st anniversary of his death. This memorial for remembering Bush died in Malaya. The signature of this memorial is the drawing 44 figure on it wall. These 44 figures are prominent figures in civilization development. One of the figures is Prophet Muhammad has been erased and bled due to some conflict with Islamic belief. We Islam believe that we cannot figure out the image of Prophet Muhammad. Another signature of Birch Tower is the ringing of the which mimic the London Big Bang. Overall, the ringing of Birch Tower bell every hourly has been the signature of Ipoh Town. Many of us know Ipoh is one of a popular destination for the foods and original white coffee, which are hard to find anywhere else. But do you know that there was an area named Kokubin Lane? You might think that the lane name is weird. Stroll down to know the rich and interesting history of the infamous Kokubin Lane. Other than that, this area is also infamous for gambling, opium and prostitutes. After Malaysia gains independence in 1957, all the British officers left to their countries, leaving behind many historical buildings and coronal structures. After some long age, houses here are in advanced stages of disrepair. 
Some houses are overtaken by vegetation, although somewhere, somehow, half a million ringgit is being pumped to slave up Kokumbin Lane. Now it's become as one of the favourite tourist spots in Ipoh. Kokumbin Lane or Ilai Hong as is known to the Cantonese-speaking locals, officially Jalan Parliament. Parliament land and market land plus wife land were owned by Tao Ke boss, yet Tenshing and the rental income from these properties was managed by his wife and respective concubines. As with most historic places, there are several sorry surroundings the origin of the street's unique name. The most popular ones goes that in the old days, Concubine land was where rich Chinese tycoons and British officials kept their mistresses. Today, the dozen or so pre-war shop houses that link the street have been restored to their former glory and house chic cafes, souvenir shops and boutique hotels. Sought in the beautiful architecture while checking out stores selling everything from snakes and cookies to curious and antique. With the success of Lorong Parliament as a new tourist destination in these all sections of Ipoh, where the majority of the shops have been refurnished and repurposed, it is hoped that interest in the area will spread to neighbouring streets so that more people in the community get to enjoy the benefit of tourism. Quickly post a bounce for photo and selfie and Tasia, while those looking for a dash of culture and history should visit the mini museum, which boasts an extensive collection of all household items, like vintage radio and cooking utensils. So Cuban land may be more commercialized than it was before, but it is a small price to pay to preserve its century or heritage. Beyond the busy stall and overpriced souvenirs, the place still wasn't an overall charm. If nothing else, it worth a short visit while on Ipoh Heritage Trail. As it is just within walking distance of the other attractions such as the JWW Bridge Memorial and Ipoh All Town Mirrors. The next place we went is the Hoi and Ho Museum. Hoi and Ho Museum shares the amazing stories of Hoi and Ho, the famous household brand of Chinese herbal tea since 1940. It also provides a discovery of the origins and evolution of the heritage herbal tea. Furthermore, it is the gallery about the inspirational life of Dr. Ho Kai Chong, the creator of the Hoi and Ho tea. Ho Kai Chong was born in Para. He was not interested in working in his father's coffee shop. So, he worked in a medical hall and became interested in Chinese medicine. Three years later, he started his own medical hall in Kuala Kangsa. In response to a call from the motherland, Ho Kai Chung went to China to join the Chinese army to fight the Japanese. After the Japanese surrendered in 1945, Mr. Yeo Song Park became his good friend and mentor, who went hearing of his dreams and gave him the following advice. There are big ways for big business and small ways for small business. Brew the herbal tea and sell it at the roadside is similar to selling the medicines and is able to treat people too. Ho Kai Chung was persuaded and he used up only 4 ringgit in his pocket to start up the business. Ho Kai Chung devised a new recipe for his herbal tea and with his 4 ringgit, brew one pot to sell on Treacher Street. To his surprise, it was all sold out at 5 cents a glass in less than one hour. Ho Kai Chung's herbal tea pots grew larger every day and his business prospered making average of 50 to 60 ringgit from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. every evening. By 1947, the income had grown to 70 ringgit in 5 hours and his mentor also supported him by selling in the market. Ho Kai Chung's business continued to prosper and he built a Ho and Ho factory in 1954. Dr. Ho Kai Chung's life reflects hard work and persistent determination for life. This is a Chinese proverb means no pain, no gain. And in fact, it was his key principle in life. He believed hard work that can be endured will eventually produce success. Living through struggling times of war and poverty, Dr. Ho took on the difficulties faced in life and turned them into opportunities. Dr. Ho's vision led him to creating Ho and Ho tea, a specially formulated tea which he intended to benefit everyone. Hoi and Ho tea became a savior to many over the years. 
providing relief and natural healing to people near and far. Till today, Ho and Ho continues to be a vital herbal concoction that is irreplaceable. Kelly's castle in Pera Batu Gaja near Ipo combines romance, tragedy and mystery. At the age of 21, William Kelly Smith left Scotland and arrived to Malaya to work as civil engineer to help in building the roads in Batu Gaja near Ipo. It was fortunate for Kelly to invest in rubber plantation with his substantial profit made with his previous business venture because his investment quickly rise to peak of wealth. With his fortune, Kelly returned Scotland to marry Agnes. Back in Malaya, he decided to build his wife a mansion. The Smith family soon had two children, a daughter named Helen and Anthony after 11 years. William had a passion for the weird and wonderful mansion that combines Moorish and Roman influences. He imported several Tamil workers including bricks and marbles from India to build the mansion. William wanted his mansion to be the biggest and most opulent in Malaya. The mansion comprised several stories high with a huge plant tower, an indoor tennis court and even a rooftop entertainment complex to host parties. It almost had Malaya's first ever elevator that travels from the roof down to underground tunnels. Unfortunately, several Tamil workers died of Spanish flu while building Kelly's castle and the building process stopped. His bad luck in 1926, on a routine trip back to Europe, Kelly contracted pneumonia and died suddenly at the age of 56 in Lisbon, leaving the mansion to his wife and children and was buried in a British cemetery. Agnes later packed up and left Malaya with, with her children back to Scotland. She sold the castle to a British company called Harrison and Crosswell. Anthony Kelly Smith was killed in World War II, Helen never returned to Kelly's castle. The only thing left of the first home is the covered walkway, an open courtyard and a part of crumbling wall. After the red discovery of Kelly's castle, spooky tales with hints of the supernatural emerged. A couple who visited to photograph natural animals reported to see ghostly figure in the windows. Others say William's spirit restlessly runs the second floor corridor, look carefully in his daughter's room, and her spirit in a white blouse with curly hair might appear, or just stand still in a quiet room and get the sense of uneasiness. His wife and children, who probably remember little of the mansion anyway, never return. A company managed the property as a tourist attraction now, and some believe it is hunted by the family. Culture and historical building in Ipo. Ipo is a place that contains much of the history, relics, and delicacy. Ipo is truly one of the Malaysian pride and honor for its history as well as unique lifestyle.